Now I am? Oh, wow. Hello. Back me down. Wait a minute. One, two, three. Back me down. I don't want to run them out. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the gathering service, those of you who are here and those of you who are watching us at home. We are so delighted that you're here with us this morning. This is Resurrection Sunday, which is absolutely one of the most exciting days in the Christian calendar. I want to remind you of a few things. Uh, Tuesday on the 13th at 6.30, we have game night here at the church in the Fellowship Hall. Um, we do have an Ash Wednesday service coming up on February 14th at 6.30 p.m. On 27th of April, please uh, save the date, Once Upon an Apron Retreat by the United Women of Faith uh, is going to be held here, and we are going to celebrate uh, women of all ages and stages of life and make it into a day of retreat, but also a work project for missions. And so we are delighted. I want to remind you that we are always open for prayer requests. Just call the church office at Church United Methodist Church and tell them whom you want us to to pray for and we will also for those of you that are here we do have uh, the tacos that the United Methodist men are serving so let us pray and welcome God into this worship place holy Lord God be present with us now bless us and help us to feel united in you and united in one another in Jesus name let us begin with worship and song howdy folks happy Sunday <laughs> Um, we're going to start it off with Lift Your Head Weary Center. Uh, just a reminder that no matter how far we feel like we've strayed from where we're supposed to be in our lives, um, we are always called back. <laughs> the 
path of forgiveness, salvation's waiting there. You built a mighty fortress, ten thousand burdens high. Love is here to lift you up, here to lift you high. If you're lost and wandering, come stumbling in like a prodigal child. Wall start crumbling, let the gates of glory open wide. Walked away, unspeakable things you've done Fix your eyes on the mountain Let the past be dead and gone Come all saints and sinners You can't outrun God Whatever you've done can overcome The power of the blood If you're lost and wandering Come stumbling in like a prodigal child Walls start crumbling Let the gates of glory open wide If you're lost and wrecked again Come stumbling in like a prodigal child Walls start crumbling Let the gates of glory open wide If you're lost and wandering Stumbling in like a prodigal child Walls start crumbling Let the gates of glory open wide If you're lost and wrecked again Come stumbling in like a prodigal child Walls start crumbling Let the gates of glory open wide If you're lost and wrecked again Come stumbling in like a prodigal child Walls start crumbling Let the gates of glory open wide
is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All throne and dominion, all power and position, your name stands above them all. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All throne and dominion, all power and position, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cry. it as well. And I don't know about y'all, but I've had a lot in my life that could have blown up in my face over the last six months, and it hasn't. <laughs> Praise be. <laughs> uh, but even if it did, it is well. Um, sometimes I give people the quick little rundown, and they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, I am absolutely completely fine. My soul feels like it's in stasis and is overwhelmed by joy, and I am just absolutely gobsmacked that that's where I was raised to be, and that's who the people in my life have continued to allow me to be. So.
Smacked. I love it. Yeah, the girl was gobsmacked. You gotta love it when gobsmacks us, right? I'm pulling on my cord here. Help, help, somebody help the girl. Hey, good morning. It is Pastor Terry back with you again, and this time you're gonna get a message from the Lord, I hope. So if you'll pray with me for a second. Lord God, hide me so securely behind the cross that honestly and truly it is your words and your thoughts that are transcended into these people and not mine, O oh Lord God. In your precious son's name I pray, amen. How many of you have ever read the Psalms and you've noticed a word, Selah? Yeah. Selah. And, and you've, have you ever wondered what Selah meant? Well, we're going to talk about it, uh, and, and I, I wrote a few notes. Um, actually, there were several pages, but they told me I only had 10 minutes, so I'm going to... There we go. I've got the timer going. Um, you know, sila is used over 70 times in Scripture, and actually what it means is listen, but it means more than listen. Um, Jesus speaks frequently of those who have ears to hear, let them hear, and or he will say, he who has ears, like in Matthew eleven fifteen or in Mark 4, 9, uh, and 23. And he is referring to all humanity because we all have what? Ears. All of us have ears. But do we all use our ears, Cassidy? Yeah. We do? Mm, you always listen to mom? No. Uh-oh. <laughs> do we wives always listen to our husbands? Um, do husbands always listen to our wives? If we're smart. <laughs> this is a great, great group. They, they get it. But what is more important and more smart, if I may use that, I think my English teachers would just be rolling over, but... The smarter people use their ears to not just 
listen or hear, but to listen. And there is a difference. There is a real difference between hearing and listening. When we can be uh, watching television and someone is talking to us, or when we're on our phone, right, and we see everybody on their phone all the time and you're trying to talk to them, and, you know, half the time they will say, what? What? And you've already told them three times, but they're so invested in their phone that they don't hear what you are saying. They don't listen. They may be hearing the noise, but they are not listening. They are not tuned in. And so one of the, the scriptures that I wanted to use was from Mark 4, 15 through 20, and it's the parable of the sower. And many of us are familiar with it, but you, if you're not... It's where uh, Jesus tells a parable or a story uh, that illustrates the point he's trying to make. And he talks about a sower that goes out and he sows the seed and some falls on the rocky path. And, um, and so it's the birds swoop in and they gobble it up. And so it's useless seed. And uh, then some of the seed uh, falls onto sort of shallow soil. And it does grow for a while, but it soon withers and fades. And then some is sown amongst the weeds and the weeds grow up and they choke it out. And then finally, the sower manages to get some of his seed into the good soil where it grows and it flourishes and it grows to full bloom and out of it comes something that is usable and marvelous and nourishing and and so this is what Jesus is talking about and he's saying those that have ears that hear listen to what I am saying I want you to grasp and understand and the disciples who really struggled like many of us today okay with getting it all right, it doesn't always gobsmack us right in the face. And it takes a while for us to understand. But what he wanted us to understand is that sometimes God speaks and we just don't listen. Okay, the birds swoop in and take it away. Sometimes he speaks and we kind of listen and some of it sort of takes root, but we don't really think about it very much. So it doesn't grow. And it ultimately, and then there's some that, that, that God speaks and we hear it and it starts to grow, but then we're tempted by other things, by the world, by children, by busyness, by technology, by jobs, by worries, by fears, by what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. And all those things strangle God's words and we forget them and we lose them. But then there are those of us or those moments in each of us when we truly listen and we truly hear what God is saying. And we just take it into our hearts. And we nurture it. And it grows. And it grows. And I remember reading um, the story of Eddie Rickenbacker when he was, uh, many of you may remember him. You younger ones may not. But he was a very famous World War II pilot. And he was lost at sea. And he was abandoned in a life raft for days and days and days. And one of the things that he said was that although he had never really memorized scripture particularly or studied theology, theology particularly, that God had implanted in him through going to Sunday school, through listening to his parents, through reading scripture, memories, verses that came to his brain. You see, they had been planted in his heart. And that's what kept him going all those days when he was there. And, and, and it was just nurturing him. It was nurturing him and it kept him alive. It gave him hope. It gave him faith. It helped him to know, as you sang, that it is well. It is well with us. Whatever's going on, it is well with us because God is with us and he speaks to us. And the other time I wanted to talk about was very important time and it's resurrection time. Resurrection Sunday, that is what this is. And Jesus goes up to the mountain with uh, Simon Peter and uh, John and his brother Andrew. I mean his brother James. And so they go up to the mountaintop and all of a sudden these visions appear and here comes Moses and here comes Elijah. And as they are standing there talking to him, the three disciples just literally fall on their faces in awe at seeing this vision. Now, 
um, I love that contemporary song that says, if I were to see Jesus, would, would I stand and speak to him or would I fall in my face? Would I ever be able to speak at all? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think I'd probably just stand there with my mouth open going, <laughs> but, but this is the moment for them and they see this incredible vision and Jesus is transfigured. His whole body becomes brilliantly white, almost blindingly white. And out of that white comes the voice of God and it says, this is my beloved son, Selah, him. Listen to him. That's the term that is used in the scripture. It is translated in our Bibles as listen or hear, but it is the word selah, which means to listen, to understand, and then to take action on. It is so very, very important for understand that faith is an active thing. It isn't a passive thing. We don't just lie there and we're suddenly spiritual. We are like things, seeds that need to be planted. And we need to be nurtured and we need to grow. That's why we come in a community together, whether it's online or in person, in church or in Sunday schools or with groups that we know and that we care about. It's there that it, our, our soil is tended. It's there we are nurtured. We are given the vitamins and the minerals and whatever it is we need, the water to grow and to learn what it is that God is trying to tell us, that God loves us and people love us. But we need to learn to listen, not just hear, put down the cell phones, Put down the Game Boys or the Xbox or shut off the television. When you're talking to a loved one, sit down face to face. When you're in church, listen to the words God is speaking through your pastor or the songs that are being sung. God is speaking through the music. He's speaking through the words. This is the word of God and he's speaking speaking loudly to us and he wants us to listen it is his beloved son it is his beloved son and we are to listen we are to sila so now you can feel very smart you've learned a new hebrew word s-e-l-a-h sila it means to listen to understand and to take action on so when we hear the word of God, when God speaks to us in our hearts or through a friend or through a scripture or through a song or when we are praying, we get this wonderful stillness in our soul. We are to listen. We are to study it, understand it, and then we are to take action on it. And I pray with all my heart, soul, and mind that this is something each and every one of us can learn to do every day. I guarantee you that it will increase your spirituality. It will increase your intimacy with your Lord God. And it will certainly increase your intimacy with one another. In the name of God who loves you, Christ who died for you, and the Holy Spirit that will lead, guide, and direct you from now and forevermore into listening. Amen. We're going to finish up today with nobody. Fun fact for y'all, if y'all didn't know it, I actually have mild stage fright, so I kind of enjoy being a nobody. And I think after this song, you all will, so. <laughs>
Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. Living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. Living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. Moses had stayed friends. David brought a rock to a sword fight You picked twelve outsiders Nobody would have chosen And you changed the world More of the story Everybody's got purpose When I hear that devil talking to me Saying, who do you think you are? Well, I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody Who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. Living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. Living for the world to see, nobody but Jesus. Let me go down, down, down in history. As another blood but faithful member of the family. If they all forget my For the world to see Nobody but Jesus Let me go down, down, down In history As another blood But faithful member of the family If they all forget my name That's fine with me But for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm just a nobody to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul ever since you rescued me you gave my heart a song to sing living for the world to see nobody but jesus living for the world to see nobody but jesus Thank y'all for joining us this Sunday. As Abby would say, go forth, be kind to yourself, and be kind to others.